Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be talking about separation of the placenta, also known also known as abruptio placenta. So before we get started, guys, please help support this channel. Like this video. You're going to love it. Go ahead and press that like button now so you don't forget. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So let's take a look. Abruptio placenta, also known as placental abruption. It says this is premature separation of the placenta or as also known abruptio placentae. It's detachment of part or all of the normally implanted placenta from the uterus. Why is this a problem? Let me tell you why this is a problem for both the fetus and the mother. It's a problem for the fetus because once that uh, placenta separates from the uterus, the oxygen, is cut off the nutrients is cut off from the fetus why is this a problem for mom she's excuse me she's going to start bleeding out okay so this is a problem for both the fetus and the mom this is a medical emergency it's a problem depending on the severity because um and we'll go we'll go into the prognosis however this is something that needs to be addressed immediately addressed immediately so in incidence and etiology premature separation of the placenta is a serious complication approximately one-third of all antepartum bleeding is caused by placental abruption mom can bleed to death this is very serious the number one risk factor for uh, placental abruption look at this maternal hypertension whether chronic or uh, pregnancy related, this is most consistently identified risk factor for abruption. Cocaine is also a risk factor. Blunt external abdominal trauma, usually from an MVA or maternal battering. Domestic battering, someone punches her in the stomach. Okay, those are all risk factors for separation of the placenta. Other risk factors, cigarette smoking, history of abruption in a previous pregnancy, and preterm uh, premature rupture of membranes. All of those are risk factors. You guys do need to know the risk factors for uh, placental um, separation. Clinical manifestations. Classic symptoms of placental abruption include vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain and i circle abdominal pain for a reason i'm going to talk to you guys about that in a second uterine tenderness and contractions the reason i circle abdominal pain lots of the signs and symptoms of um separation of the placenta um abruptio placenta are the same they're similar to placenta previa but guess what when it comes to separation of placenta patient's going to have pain in placenta previa it's painless bleeding OK, so that's a big difference that you need to be aware of to know the difference between those two. And this patient is going to have painful bleeding and placenta previa is going to be painless bleeding. Let's keep going. Bleeding can result in maternal hypovolemia. Well, guys, think about it. Hypo, too little, little bit of volemia fluid within the vascular space remember it's that oxygenated blood in the mom's vascular space that is perfusing the whole body so this mom can literally go into shock from all that bleeding shock oliguria and urea let's talk about this it has to make sense to you do not try to memorize guys you have to understand what's happening so mom starts bleeding out right we do not have enough um, oxygenated blood in the vascular space. That oxygenated blood is carrying the oxygen, vitamins, minerals, nutrients to mom's entire body. Guess what is the first organ to shut down whenever something big's going on, such as hypovolemia, the kidneys, okay? Patient starts to go into shock. Those organs start to shut down because they're not being perfused. You're going to see oliguria, hello, kidney shutting down. Um, patient's going to have no urine or decreased urine coagulopathy they're bleeding all over the place mild to severe uterine hypertonicity is present your body's meant to survive no matter what so mom's bleeding out and you're going to see those contractions the tonicity increase trying to stop the bleeding it's going to try but it's going to be unsuccessful but you may see you will see excuse me mild to moderate hypertonicity because it's trying to compensate it's trying to help with all that bleeding and decrease the bleeding Pain is mouth to severe. It's going to be localized over the site, but there will be pain. Board-like abdomen. Think about it. Why do you think mom's abdomen is going to be board-like? What's causing that board-like abdomen? All of the blood that's accumulating. That's what's causing that abdomen to be so hard and board-like. 
lab findings, positive APT test, that's um, blood in the amniotic fluid. Is there supposed to be blood in the amniotic fluid? No. What else? Decrease in hemoglobin and hematocrit, that H and H is um, going to start to go down because she's bleeding out. Decrease in coagulation factor levels. It makes sense because she's bleeding out. She's she's not clotting, right? Uh, clotting defects such as DIC may be present. Maternal and fetal outcomes. Hemorrhage, her bleeding out. Hypovolemic shock, those organs shutting down from the blood loss. Hypofibrinogenemia, you guys know I pronounced it wrong, but you guys see that. Um, that patient's not clotting the way they're supposed to be clotting to try to stop that bleeding. Thrombocytopenia, again, same. They're not clotting to stop that bleeding or they're not clotting enough. They're not, the clotting is not compensating enough to stop that bleeding. All of these are associated with severe abruption. That blood loss is just too much for the body to compensate. Fetal complications include intrauterine growth retardation or restriction. They're going to be smaller than the, the fetus is going to be much smaller than it should be. Oligohydramnios. There's not enough fluid in the amniotic uh, sac. Preterm birth, hypoxemia, and stillbirth. Diagnosis and ultrasound that can identify the three main sources of abruption. The diagnosis of abruption is confirmed after birth by visual inspection of placenta. Just looking at it and you'll be able to tell. Placental abruption should be highly suspected. And the woman who experiences, I don't know why I don't have this highlighted, but this is important. Look at this, guys. Sudden onset of intense, usually localized, what? Uterine pain with or without vaginal bleeding. Usually you're going to see vaginal bleeding, but it's very important to understand that they will have pain. The initial assessment is much the same as for placenta previa. The biggest difference you're going to see between those two guys is going to be pain. Placenta previa without pain, with pain, placenta abruption. Physical examination usually reveals abdominal pain, again, uterine tenderness and contractions. Let's talk about management. So for expected management, if the fetus is between 20, remember 20 weeks, viability, right? If the fetus is between 20 and 34 weeks of gestation and both the woman and the fetus are stable, expected management's gonna be implemented. We're just gonna monitor very closely and then um, intervene as needed, right? However, corticosteroids are going to be given to accelerate the fetal lung maturity. Remember surfactant? That's what helps those lungs to expand so the fetus can breathe on its own outside of the wound. So you do expect for corticosteroids to be administered. How about active management? Immediate birth is the management of choice if the fetus is at full-term gestation or bleeding is moderate to severe and the mother or fetus is in jeopardy. There's no choice after that, okay? At least one large bore, usually they'll put two guys, but at least one large bore, 16 to 18 gauge IV line should be inserted. The maternal vital signs are monitored frequently to observe for signs of declining hemodynamic status, such as increasing pulse and decreasing blood pressure, right? When someone's bleeding out, what do you see? You see the blood pressure go down and the heart's trying to compensate, so you see the heart rate go up. And of course, you're looking at the urine output. You're going to see the urine output go down as well. Serial lab studies, you're going to be looking at the H&H. &H. You want to make sure it doesn't start dropping, right? You're going to be looking at the clotting studies um, because one of the problems is um, clotting defects and, you know, hemorrhage. Indwelling catheter is going to be inserted for continuous assessment of urine output. Why? Again, when the patient is hemorrhaging, they're bleeding out. One of the first things that happen is the kidneys start to shut down. So we really need to be looking at that urine output. This is an excellent indirect me measure of maternal organ perfusion. Why? Because when those organs are not being perfused, the body's going to try to save itself no matter what. And the first organ to shut down is going to be the kidneys. Fluid volume replacement may be necessary. Administration of blood products may be necessary as well. So they're definitely going to be getting lots of fluids and they may need to get blood. 
Although vaginal birth is preferable, the C-section may be necessary. Cesarean birth should not be attempted when women have severe or uncorrected coagulopathy. And that makes sense, guys. Come on. If that coagulopathy is severe or it has not been corrected, they're already bleeding out. They are not clotting the way that they're supposed to to stop the bleeding. Does it make sense to cut into them? Absolutely not. Okay. So um, vaginal birth is preferable, but we might have to do a C-section. But let me tell you something. If they've got coagulopathy going on and that hasn't been corrected, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be able to control the bleeding and we don't want that patient to bleed out. Guys, that is your placenta ab abruptio or separation of the placenta. That's it. It is not as hard as you guys think it is. I think I might, the next video, I think I'm going to cover um, placenta previa just so you guys can see the difference. Because I promise on test questions, you are going to have to know the difference between the two. Please let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me cover. I haven't done so already. Guys, I see your comments. I just can't respond to everyone, but I see your comments and I have a long running list of videos coming your way that you guys want to see me cover. So I'm not ignoring you. I just can't respond to everyone, but I see it and I'm making a list and I'm trying to push out these videos to you as quickly as possible. Um, there was something I want to address. Yes, this is what I want to address. Uh, don't forget Sunday, October 30th, is that's going to be my next YouTube live, Sunday, October 30th. And I promised you a time and I still don't have a time yet. I think I'm, it's going to be 1 p.m., but I'm not 100% sure. But I promise. I said that last week, but this week I mean it. I promise this week I will have a time locked down. But Sunday, October 30th, 2022, because I know you guys will be watching this video two years from now. 2022 is going to be my next YouTube live where I'm going to be going over how to answer these NCLEX questions, specifically priority and delegation, which patients take priority, how do you figure out what type of patients take priority, what do you get, delegate, what can, what do you have to keep for yourself, who do you delegate to, and how do you figure that out. So that's really what I'm going to be covering on my next YouTube Live, Sunday, October 30th, time to be announced. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and you guys will catch me on the next video.